So the LV should get me down there. It's one of the heaviest, heaviest lipless cranks. Oh yeah, there we go. LV, ooh, the LV got him, man, that's a nice one. Oh my gosh. excited gals not taking it all off all right so today I just kind of want to go over a few essentials of bank fishing and uh, number one is good boots a lot of ankle support and uh, um, preferably I mean depending on uh, if you're gonna be in the water, if you're gonna be in the water, don't get waterproof boots because they take forever to dry. But uh, if you're just being, if you're on land and you don't want to get wet feet, and then by all means, Gore-Tex is the way to go. But uh, yeah, good footwear is number one because uh, that really is gonna limit your your walking, your comfort, and your safety. So um, you know, good footwear is number one. And then number two is a uh, good pack. <laughs> All right guys, so now I know a lot of my videos I'm um, fishing off of a kayak, but uh, um, truthfully I am a uh, bank fisherman at heart and that will always be my preferred uh, method of fishing. Um, you know, humans are born with two feet, born to run, born to walk. You know, if they're meant to be in the water, they'd have fins and gills, or at least fins, you know, maybe a blowhole on top of your head, but, uh, you know, you know what I mean. So, you know, I, you know, I don't mind being on the kayak. I don't mind fishing charter boats and jet boats and all that stuff, but, you know, I honestly, uh, just... Uh, feel most at home uh, on land, so I truly enjoy exploring uh, on the bank. You know, I, I'm a hunter as well, so to me, um, being, being able to walk and stock an entire um, bank line, shoreline, is really um, much more satisfying. So I, I prefer that method. Um, you know, and it's 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 on on my terrain, you know, in my environment. So. I, I, I really enjoy that uh, much more than being on a boat. You know, not not to say I don't enjoy being on a boat. You know, I definitely love the freedom. But uh, you know, like I said, man, we were born with uh, two feet, meant to be walking on land, baby. So, yeah, this is going to be. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a a, a series on bank fishing because uh, I just don't think there's a lot of uh, information out there or a lot of videos. You know. Uh, catering to us bank fishermen and uh, you know I you know just because we don't have a boat you know doesn't mean that uh, you know we deserve any any less attention you know I me mean? because uh, a lot of us can afford boats we just don't want to they're a pain in the ass but uh, uh, I meant pain in the bass but uh, yeah in any case yeah I'm gonna be doing uh, a few videos on the bank fishing and they'll be ongoing so um, yeah I'll definitely have ongoing bank fishing videos because like I said that's that's where my heart uh, is um, as far as fishing so uh, um, today I'm going to cover just a, a few uh, necessities to be an effective bank fisherman um, and really um, I'll get more into depth uh, on each item in a different segment but today I'm just going to give you a brief overview of uh, how to get started um, you know so so basically um, you know, if, if you're new to to bank fishing and to exploring, you know, we, we got Google Maps. I mean, you got fishing forums, Google Maps, um, and I, I just I just go by Google Maps and just uh, go to the satellite mode and just look for for shoreline that looks promising and then just go explore. So, uh, you know, I Google Map this area and I saw that there was like a 
there are some rock points and then it went off into a, uh, a back eddy and then the main river is out here so I, I, I knew that would be a good place to uh, uh, to uh, explore you know there's a lot of structure and a lot of different um, um, aspects of the water um, you know you got the main body of water some deep points and then you got uh, some shallow area right here and uh, a lot of rock structure and then there's sand so every time you got that kind of diversity it's it's you know it's a promising area to explore um, I would also rec recommend uh, Navionics um, I'll go ahead and I'll put all, all the information down in the link below, but uh, yeah, Navionics and just Google Maps satellite view and uh, you'll get you started, man. But, uh, you know, as far as uh, physically getting out there, I would say, uh, number one, um, I would say get yourself a good pair of boots because, uh, you know, without, uh, well, let me see, without a good pair of boots, without a good pair of boots, basically. Yeah, you're gonna be uh, at a big disadvantage. So I prefer just uh, you know, just some good hiking boots. You know, if if you're gonna be getting in into a lot of water, like if you live in a, a warm state or you fish mostly in the warm weather, and you always uh, find yourself waiting, I would just go ahead and get some uh, non-waterproof boots. You know, um, because waterproof boots take forever to dry. Um, so unless you are out there intending to wade and not get wet feet, um, just get your standard non-waterproof hiking boots um, and they'll just be just fine. As long as they have good ankle support and they are comfortable on your feet, that's really the important thing is they got to be comfortable. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself just, uh, you know, miserable while you're exploring and then it's going to take away all the fun of uh, being on the bank, man. So, yeah. Um, comfortable, supportive, a pair of hiking boots, number one. And then uh, number two is you want really, a really good um, fishing pack. So what you want to look for is very good padding. You want a, ch a sternum strap. And then you also want, um, you know, the, the hip support belt. Because these are essential because you know, if you're like me, or if you're a bass fisherman especially, you're going to find yourself putting about 30 to 50 pounds of stuff in there. And, you know, not to include, you know, your, your water and food and all that stuff. So you want that, you want that hip support, uh, definitely, because uh, the hip belt will, will help you um, alleviate pressure from, off of the, uh, the shoulders. So if you're doing just, if you have just a backpack that has just shoulder straps, you're, you're, you're going to cut off circulation and it's not going to be comfortable with all that weight. So you want that hip belt to help alleviate the pressure. And then um, the other thing you want, to want is uh, rod holders. So it's kind of odd, but a lot of uh, fishing specific backpacks just don't have rod holders. I mean, you know, figure that. You know, uh, a lot of places I go have lots of trees and, and brush. And you need you need your your hands free. You know you need to be able to you know work your machete or or you know just be able to catch yourself if you uh, you know trip on a on a log or a stump or a rock. So I like to have my hands free, especially in exploring new areas. I'm, I don't I'm not sure about. So it's very important to uh, have rod holders. Yep, just like this. And this is a Cabela's backpack. It is a specific angling backpack. And uh, I'll include the links down below, but uh, it is a really good bag. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over it uh, more in detail on my product reviews. But uh, I'm just kind of giving you an overview of, of things you need to look for to get started. So, yeah, definitely a nice backpack like this. And another thing about this backpack that's really nice is, is it's well padded on the shoulder straps and also just on the back itself where it's going to have contact with your back. So that's, that's a really big help. And one thing about this backpack that makes it a really good value is uh, in its price range, I think it's the only one that has a, a, a internal frame. It's got, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's semi-rigid. It's a, it's, it's a plastic frame, but uh, it really helps um, uh, alleviate any pressure points on your back. So yeah, I, I think this is the best bag for your money. So I'll go over it more in detail later. 
And then, all right. The other components, of course, are your rods. And for you bass guys, I know it's, it's hard to find two-piece bass rods, but Cabela's makes a really nice uh, two-piece bass rod that's super affordable. I mean, it, it should be a $100 rod, but I mean, believe it or not, it's $39. It's, it's always going on sale. And it's uh, basically here, see if you can read that. And it is a tourney trail. It is made of IM8, so it's really light and very sensitive. I mean, it's, it's insanely light and, and sensitive. I mean, for 39 bucks, it's like a steel. So uh, on this one here, it's actually, uh, uh, you know, eight to 17 pounds. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty stout rod. I'd say it's a medium heavy to heavy. Um, so it is very stout. And the best thing about this particular rod, especially for, uh, you know, somebody who's hiking a lot and going through rugged terrain is if you look at the, uh, if you look at the guides, they are all double foot guides all the way up there. And what's important about the, why that's important is that uh, you will find yourself catching your rods on brush and overhanging obstacles all the time. And the, the guides just get beat up. And I've had so many rods with just single foot just get just bent to the point where they eventually just break off. So these have never budged. So, I mean, I would say this is the best travel rod out there for the money. And don't let anybody tell you that it's less sensitive or heavier uh, just because it's a two-piece. Absolutely not true. You know, um, you can't, can't listen to everything you hear. You know, you gotta try it for yourself. So, you know, I mean, Honestly, if that was the case, you know, fly rodders would be screwed. But, you know, if you fly fish, you know that most of the rods are three to four pieces and they have the lightest and most sensitive rods uh, of any uh, category of fishing. So, uh, yeah, just because it's a two piece does not mean it's inferior. So, yeah, it is. That is a nice rod. And the nice thing is for 40 bucks, you get a lifetime warranty from Cabela. So, I mean, I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, 40 bucks, lifetime warranty, IMA construction, um, you know, built like a tank. It's, it's, it's a sweet rod. Um, I mean, $40 rod with a $300 reel. So that just goes to show how much I like this rod. So, um, yeah, I would recommend one of those. And, uh, you know, Cabela's is always, like, uh, putting these on sale, but they're also always changing them or, like, discontinuing certain lines. So... I would snatch these up. I've, I've got like four of them. So, yeah, these are awesome. And then for my spinning rod, it is the same thing. And it is the Cabela's Tourney Trail there. And this one's actually fairly light. It's a line weight, four to 10 pounds. Uh, what I actually did was, uh, since this one has just insane sense sensitivity. I actually uh, made it a bass rod by just cutting the tip off and putting a new uh, a, a new tip on there. It made it uh, very stiff, so it uh, allows me to really get the hook set in. So I'm like, you know, for 39 bucks, I have no issues. You know, shortening it, making it stiffer, works like a charm, man. And that made it more compact as well. I mean. Uh, you know, this one does not have the double foot guides, but like I said, um, you know, Cabela stands behind their products and, uh, you know, if it breaks, they'll just replace it. I actually broke uh, my first of these rods, um, uh, flipping a bass, and uh, uh, I just went back in and said, I, I broke it flipping a bass. And they're like, let's grab another one, man. I mean, can't beat that, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, if, if they said, oh, well, you broke it because you did that, that, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have like, you know, held it against them because, you know, that's probably uh, considered abusive. But uh, yeah, Cabela's has always uh, had no issues um, standing behind the product. So that's why I got this one, even though it doesn't have the, uh, you know, the double, double foot guides just because, you know, I know if it does break, Cabela's will take care of me. So, highly recommended. So, uh, 
yeah, those are the uh, kind of the uh, the primary components. But uh, I'm going to go over um, what I carry inside the bag because uh, you know I do have my first aid, and then I have uh, you know total of three lights. I got a headlamp, um, a a search lamp that is also uh, designed as a headlamp, and then I have a, a 1600 lumen um, uh, search light um, handheld. Yeah, nice. So, um, you know, that's nice. really just because I tend to like go far out and I tend to like have about uh, a thousand last casts. So, by the time I know it, it's, it's dark as hell. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it could be, you know, a little scary if you're you know, a couple miles out and, you know, it's just pitch black. So good to always have uh, extra lights out there. And don't go cheap on your lights, man. Don't don't be one of them horror movies where you're, you're in the deepest, darkest spot and your light just flickers out. So uh, get get good lights, you know, Claris, through night, night core, you know, stream light. You know, you know, what, you know what all the nice ones are. So just uh, get something that's uh, reliable, you know, so, um, but uh, I'll go. I'll go over a lot of all that stuff later. But uh, yeah, I really wanted just to, uh, you know, it's kind of the first chapter of uh, you know dedicated, uh, f you know, bank fishing segment. And I really wanted just to cover this, uh, you know, just a brief overview of of the uh, the primary components. But uh, yeah, so I'll I'll go ahead and uh, 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 you know upload the other, the other information later in my other videos. So yeah, let's get going. Let's get fishing. All right, thank you for joining me. Hang loose, hope to see you on the water. Okay, well, no go on that one. Let's try a different lipless. Try the big dog, Rapala. I think we might just bust out the LV. See. See what she delivers. <clears throat> According to Navionics, this the spot has a. It's probably like 40 feet. It's pretty deep. So the LV should get me down there. It's one of the heaviest, heaviest lipless cranks. Oh yeah, there we go. LV. Ooh, the LV got him, man. That's a nice one. Oh my gosh. Oh, dude, that's a nice one, guys. Holy smokes, that is a nice fish right there. Oh man, that is a nice fish, dude. Guys, that is a nice fish. Let's see here. Oh, that is a nice one. Oh. Right there, guys. That is a chunk. Right off of the LV, man. Oh. 